In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to improve your on-page search engine optimization. So on-page SEO is practice of optimizing your website so that they'll rank higher on the search result pages on search engines, especially Google. So how do you go about doing that exactly? So in the coming parts of the video, I'm just going to show you a few things step by step and we'll go through each of them in detail. So let's start off with the page titles. All right. Now, as far as page titles go, you want to keep it below 70 characters where possible and include at least one of your target keywords or phrases so it's easier for people who are searching to identify that the results are relevant. Okay, and you want to position keywords towards the front of the title to lower the risk of it getting cut off on the search engine result pages whatsoever. Okay, then the next part is the meta description. So what's a meta description is basically the a short paragraph of the text placed within uh, the codes of your web page. doesn't matter whether it's HTML or a WordPress site. And that explains what the page is about in a nutshell. So if anyone searches for your web page through Google, this is basically the snippet. So at times Google is going to show the users the contents of the meta description tag in the search snippet. So although meta description does not impact Google rankings, uh, Google does use a click-through rate or CTR to determine whether your page is relevant or whether it's a good result. As a general rule of thumb, you want to limit the number of characters for meta description to 320 characters or below. Now, how do you go about exactly writing a meta description? Here are some school of thoughts. You should word it in a way that it's actionable or write it in a active sentence. And ideally, you want to include a call to action of some kind. And at the same time, you want to balance it out with matching the content and what it's all about. And this is very, very important because Google is able to detect meta descriptions that try to trick the visitor or try to do some clickbaity kind of content. And you don't want to be doing this kind of dodgy stuff or else you're going to risk getting penalized because Google is in the business of serving quality content to their visitors on the search engines. All right, next one is that it should contain a focus keyword. If the search keyword matches the text in a meta description, that's going to be a big advantage here. Google will be more likely to use that meta description and highlight it in the search results. The meta description should also be unique. So you don't want to be having a duplicate or copying it or cloning from somewhere else and things like that. So a duplicate meta description will make all the pages seem as if they're all the same thing. So you don't want to be doing that kind of thing. Okay, so visit Google Search Console and then you go to Search Appearance and then to HTML Improvements or you can use the Screaming Frog SEO Spider to check for duplicate meta descriptions. You can also use the Snippet Optimizer to simulate how your title and meta description is going to be like when it appears in the search. Now let's talk about your content. This is what the page is all about. So. In the web page itself, it doesn't matter whether it's a HTML page or a WordPress site. You see, using keywords in your content is used by Google as a ranking factor. So the way I see it, the best rule of thumb is to use keywords naturally. Focus on what matters to your audience, not how many times you want to include a keyword over and over again and repeat it and try to do what people call keyword stuffing. So some people do that and it's highly discouraged. I mean, it's fine to use keywords in multiple locations on your site, but just don't overdo it to the point where it seems unnatural. And Google is getting smarter these days. And if they pick this up, Google will demote your web pages in search results. And that's the last thing you want it to happen. I also recommend that you post longer and quality content to boost visitor uh, stay on your website. Okay, putting in engaging images, videos, and diagrams would help reduce bounce rate and increase a longer stay for your visitors and these are two crucial user interaction ranking factors next let's talk about images since we're talking about it it is advisable to use original images and reference source if you're using an existing one okay optimize the size of the images the smaller the size uh, of the image in terms of file size the better it is because one of the other factors is that you want to have the site load as reasonably fast as possible and as an added part, you want to make sure that your target keyword is part of your image alternate text or alt text in short. So use descriptive file names. It is not advisable to use 
random names like image 1145.jpg or any names like that. You want to give them a descriptive file names like for example, man eat hot dog.jpg. I just thought that up. Okay. And you want to make sure you don't use SEO friendly uh, addresses. Make your website URLs short and sweet. And if you're using WordPress, you won't want to take advantage of the permalinks. Okay. And it is also advisable to add your target keyword within the URL. Use internal links. Now, internal links is a hyperlink on a web page to another page within the same website or domain. So this is why websites like Wikipedia uh, or WikiHow, that's why they always rank at the top for most Google searches because what they did is that they built a intricate network of links among their own web pages. So what you want to do is that you want to link to the tree in every post. Alternatively, you can link to the five older posts when you publish a new content. Next, you can use outbound links, and outbound links are links that are going to direct you to another website outside. So this aids Google and figure out on your page topic, and it also shows Google that your page is the what I call the hub or the center for quality information. Social sharing buttons. Now that's a really interesting one here. Social sharing generates more views and this means more people linking to your site. So this gives you an indirect ranking boost and Google does not take social singers into account when uh, ranking sites, but think of it as a little way that you can create a little bit more viral exposure for every visitor who comes to your website. And finally, boosting your website speed. Now page loading speed is an SEO ranking signal. You can boost your speed of your website loading by using a content delivery network or CDN, compressing images, and changing to faster hosting. So you can check your site's loading speed with GT metrics and see how this goes. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.